good evening everyone welcome to the uh, next lecture in the series of uh, lectures in aoc and web academy season 3 uh, today we have a very well known and very passionate uh, teacher of neurology dr mohammad kunju uh, from tiruvananthapuram many of you might have uh, uh, attended his lectures or talks in uh, uh, conferences or workshop uh, he other than uh, being a wonderful teacher uh he is a very humble human being and uh, uh, he has a lot of publications as well as book chapters and we are privileged to have dr kunju here with us today so sir will be talking on uh, approach to child with microcephaly and uh, differentials and what are the clinical aspects as well as evaluation of a child with microcephaly over to you sir okay thank you uh, thank you ramesh uh, for the introduction and uh, aoc and uh, for uh, continuing with the uh, academic activities for the post graduates so today uh, i'll be dealing with the uh, microcephaly approach though the topic is uh, what is uh, new there are a lot of things uh, that is happening but i'll be uh, going in a basic thing then uh, uh, i'll bring in uh, certain uh, advanced things also so what is microcephaly because all of uh, all the uh, pediatricians and pediatric uh, residents will know that uh, usually when we uh, uh, utilize uh, for any statistical thing we use uh, two standard deviation but this is one situation uh, where uh, we use uh, more than three standard deviation variation so that means okay. here at segments uh, more than three standard deviations below the mean for the age and size is considered as uh, microcephaly and uh, so means uh, the normal size of the brain will be definitely less in a child with uh, microcephaly and uh, uh, all of you must know how to measure the head circumference also because many times uh, seen in a very uh, a child who is uh, crying as well as a uh, Uh, struggling uh, to avoid the examination they may not uh, allow us to do a proper head circumference measurement but anyway but what you have to do is uh, definitely keep the the front region just above the uh, eyebrows and uh, posteriorly it must be in the most prominent part not the occiput but it should be the most prominent part in the posterior region and then you measure the head circumference and uh, again there is an easy way to remember because again uh, when uh, we start our uh, pediatrics uh, training uh, many uh, formulas are being taught and uh, daily uh, increments of head circumference height weight etc being taught and finally students get uh, confused so i have just uh, made it so simple so you can uh, at birth the head circumference uh, is and again you must know it in an abstract term the rather than range or uh, going for a uh, values in different uh, manner okay this is a 35 cm red birth that is the average one and then uh, uh, at uh, so 12 months that means at one year you just add 12 months because 12 months 35 plus 12 would be 47 and then uh, at uh, two years you add uh, 47 plus 2 to be 49 cm and by year Just put a zero. That means it becomes fifty. And twelve years, you put a two to that, uh, so or add two, that it is fifty-two. That means from five years to twelve years, only two centimeter increase is there. So at birth it is thirty-five, one year uh, forty-seven. So what will be the head circumference at uh, six months? See, thirty-five plus six would be forty-one, because we know that in the first uh, six months there is a Uh, more uh, increase in size is there, so it will be 42. So that way we can remember. And then uh, uh, 47 plus 2 at uh, two years it is 49, five years 50, 12 years 52, and the adult uh, size would be 54 to 56. And this is for the first three months we can calculate two centimeter per month. Then uh, one centimeter per month for the next three months, and then. Next six months, it is 0.5 centimeter per month. So this way also you can calculate. But uh, there is no need to remember all these things. You can uh, 
just uh, remember 35 47 49 50 52 so in between you can uh, just uh, calculate by using these values so there is no need for uh, knowing the even the monthly increment also okay so that way you can calculate and uh, and the uh, head circumference less than three standard deviation means 1.25 centimeters so three if it is less than 3.75 definitely it will be microcephaly so that way you can uh, calculate and then uh, uh, basic uh, knowledge is very very important so that means if you are aware you can conquer okay so for again uh, for, for the last uh, 30 35 years i have the same table and uh, i remember try to remember this table so that uh, easily we can remember everything and this is from uh, nelson you can see find uh, the table number 591 uh, chapter 591 and third uh, table in that chapter so it is easily classified into primary and secondary primary we can say they, they are all uh, mainly genetic disorders because it is not uh, uh, unknown but uh, we know the etiology but uh, predominantly it is a genetic one so it is called as primary and secondary means no all our genetic causes non genetic causes can be secondary and so primary again it can be a genetic means gene related one so here uh, you can remember as the monogenic disorder so they can be autosomal recessive autosomal dominant nestling recessive like that and then uh, syndromic in this again you remember the uh, chromosomal disorders down syndrome edward syndrome like that and uh, then other uh, chromosomal anomalies like a uh, syndrome and other syndromes like uh, these three syndromes also crs we can remember as um, because congenital rubella syndrome produces a uh, microcephaly. So again, you can remember, use the, the CRS for remembering the common syndromes that produce microcephaly. That is Cornelia Delange syndrome, Rubinstein Tabe syndrome, and Smith Lemley Opit syndrome. These three syndromes uh, you can remember. So CRS, congenital rubella syndrome. Congenital rubella syndrome it is coming to the secondary or non-genetic one where uh, uh, CRS is again is there there is congenital uh, rubella syndrome CMV can remember the torch torch okay torch and then uh, fetal alcohol syndrome is one condition to be remembered and uh, you may wonder whether it is there in India or not but I have seen uh, at least uh, seven for seven eight cases of uh, fetal alcohol syndrome where uh, the uh, the mothers were using alcohol during pregnancy and the fetal hydantoin syndrome then other causes like radiation for meningitis encephalitis malnutrition is it is a, a controversial cause of microcephaly and uh, metabolic uh, causes then uh, hypothermia and hypoxic ischemia these are uh, some of the acquired uh, microcephalies i will be coming to that uh, later so you always remember this uh, uh, table and it'll be easier. And this uh, characteristic fine is there given also. You can each time you can read it and you'll remember. So, primary are a uh, uh, genetic one. As I have mentioned, they are uh, from because it is it must be familial, either autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant. And syndromic, I have mentioned already, the chromosomal disorder. And we can remember the CRS because other uh, syndromes. And uh, secondary or non-genetic we have mentioned congenital infections or torch infections so in that uh, we have to include uh, zika nowadays zika syndrome also zika uh, uh, because that is being reported from uh, uh, brazil uh, congenital zika so if the mothers uh, who get uh, zika infection during pregnancy can develop a micro uh, can uh, give birth to children with uh, microcephaly okay fetal alcohol syndrome and fetal hydantoin syndrome they also can be remembered so this is the basic one you always remember like that okay i think that is the useful one so since it is given in nelson all the examiners will be knowing that but uh, american academy of pediatrics and other uh, reviewers actually classify this uh, primary microcephaly as a different one because when the microcephaly is present at birth and due to uh, disorders of a uh, neurogenesis you, they use the term primary microcephaly because it is the neurogenesis. But uh, uh, microcephaly that is due to other causes, the, or if it is hap happening after birth, then it is called as a secondary microcephaly. In the other one, 
classification is telling that as a uh, microcephaly other than uh, all the genetic disorders very good but uh, in in uh, say in this classification even the secondary microcephaly also will involve many genetic disorders also which because it is occurring after birth so developmental process reducing in utero neuron generation and it is present at birth is called as a primary microcephaly and then secondary microcephaly develops after birth and predominantly reflects dendritic or white matter disorder so that means it will be a progressive most of the time it may be a progressive microcephaly okay so now we'll see the primary genetic disorders because remember that genetic disorders you must remember the basic classification the genetic disorders there is a mental uh, inherited disorders or the monogenic disorders they are the as i have mentioned autosomal recessive autosomal dominant and s linked recessive s linked disorders are also there s linked microcephaly one example is juber marsidi syndrome and uh, s linked lisencephaly with abnormal uh, genitalia so x lag syndrome or a dcx syndrome and uh, various chromosomal disorders as we have learned and uh, this uh, disorder this uh, monogenic disorders can be because of a neuronal migration disorders we'll be coming to that and uh, when uh, there is not much uh, migration abnormalities detected but but uh, there is a severe microcephaly then it is called as a microcephaly vera and uh, certain metabolic disorders that means also uh, you, like uh, mitochondrial disorders or disorders of uh, glycosylate also can be a genetic uh, we can include them as a genetic uh, microcephaly and so primary genetic disorders so primary microcephaly can be as i mentioned due to a defective cellular uh, migration or a defective neurulation because when the uh cells are not uh, proliferating properly so as it should have been other way around defective neurulation or a proliferation defective cellular migration and then uh, defective prosencephalization because uh, follow prosencephaly certain varieties can present with microcephaly and uh, syndromes associated with the primary genetic syndromes can be having a microcephaly where uh, see this uh, primary microcephaly many can be associated with dwarfism so you again classify them as a proportionate microcephaly with dwarfism and disproportionate micro this is a different from our proportionate dwarfism and disproportionate dwarfism where there is a triangle shortening or a or a, um, a limb shortening but here it is different proportionate microcephaly means here the mic head size uh, is somewhat proportionate to the uh the small short stature that is the proportion in microcephaly so the microcephaly may not be a very big, big issue there the conditions uh, are bloom syndrome fanconi anemia and this condition is uh, very frequently discussed microcephalic osteodysplastic primordial dwarfism or a mopad you can remember it as a mopad m o p d and uh, one type is a type 2 and then uh, ring chromosome related disorders also they are the proportionate microcephaly with dwarfism disproportionate microcephaly with dwarfism that means here the microcephaly will be very very prominent even when compared to dwarfism of short structure one example is circle syndrome so in any times when you are uh, uh, seeing a child at birth with microcephaly then your aim must be to differentiate whether uh, it is a primary microcephaly with dwarfism and uh, which is a proportionate microcephaly or a disproportionate microcephaly so by that itself we can identify see syndrome see, uh, syndromic diagnosis can be categorized okay so this then uh, coming to the secondary microcephaly i told you that uh, it can be uh, prenatal also where uh, maternal uh, drugs like uh, fetal head and joint syndrome fetal alcohol syndrome and uh, infections i have mentioned because maternal infections like uh, torch infections including zika then uh, diabetes then maternal phenylketonuria is another uh, condition that can produce a microcephaly in the child then uh, uh, radiation i already we have mentioned then uh, postnatal also because postnatal uh, insert like uh, birth asphyxia 
then again uh, uh, developing phenylketonuria uh, postnatal meningitis or even encephalitis like uh, hsv encephalitis then uh, hiv infection hiv encephalopathy already we have mentioned that malnutrition can be a controversial uh, okay and uh, then even a post traumatic because when there is a trauma atrophy of the brain then rarely hypothyroidism and hypopituitarism also can have a uh, microcephaly then uh, metabolic hypoglycemic brain injury we have seen isn't it especially hypoglycemic brain injury pre presenting with the occipital plagic cephaly and uh, uh, microcephaly so these are uh, some of the other causes to be remembered so this is the list again i have brought in that uh, nelson table there are uh, secondary uh, congenital infections i mentioned toxoplasmosis uh, rubella cytomegaly virus zika then drugs like i have mentioned fetal alcohol syndrome fetal head and joint syndrome and uh, other causes like radiation and the meningitis malnutrition all these things so this is just an elaboration of uh, that and uh, Uh, there are certain characteristic features may differentiate as i mentioned primary microcephaly usually is present at birth but uh, certain secondary microcephaly like uh, uh, torch infection can present at birth and uh, usually primary microcephaly may have a low crown receding forehead occipital flattening uh, wrinkling of skin etc and uh, it is present at birth and secondary the head size will be small that salt may not be having a that receding forehead or a characteristic features and it may be present or uh, at birth or it may be evident a bit uh, later this is an algorithmic approach for uh, diagnosing a uh, uh, microcephaly so here uh, we have seen that the head circumference is less than a uh, pre standard deviation uh, of a uh, mean so whether uh, see whether it is present at birth or not that means if it is manifesting before uh, 35 weeks then uh, it is a primary microcephaly so we take a history and a careful examination so in this uh, antenatal infections environmental insults as uh, like this because a tor screen hiv screening history of maternal phenylketonuria alcohol intake i told you that uh, you should not have any hesitation when you are seeing a child with a uh, microcephaly small chin small uh, philtrum then ask about alcohol intake and recreation and other medicinal drugs for a placental insufficiency so in uh, if it is present then uh, if such things are not there look for a dysmorphism that means dysmorphism for a syndrome like uh, uh, chromosomal anomalies down syndrome edward syndrome i'll be coming to that and measure the uh, uh, short stature for uh, and uh, other uh, look for other congenital malformations and uh, when such a definitely a microcephaly is there we will go for an mri mri will give you a diagnosis in many situations but uh, many a times there won't be any characteristic manifestation except a small brain in that case you may have to go for a, a genetic evaluation has to be may have to be done because many of the microcephalic syndromes are associated with an underlying mutation either way you can start with the uh, microarray estimation which in the initial phase so it will give a lot of information and uh, secondary microcephaly also we have done uh, all those investigations and uh, whether there is look again look for any dysmorphism or congenital malformations and we go for an mri so if uh, mri is abnormal then uh, look for any any progress or uh, uh, normal then we may have look for a progressive neurological manifestation i'll be coming to these things later and uh, suppose uh, you have done a micro array and it is negative in that case you may have to go for a proper uh, because it is a monogenic disorder so a dna testing for a mutation by a clinical uh, exome sequencing has to be done and uh, similarly if it is a progressive neurological manifestations with the evidence of a metabolic disorder a metabolic evaluation to be done this is the complete uh, evaluation where uh, so this infections and other things so we have we can investigate in that manner okay so okay. i'll just uh, give you certain uh, clinical features about uh, the various uh, microcephaly conditions 
uh, as such uh, we have understood that uh, the uh, most important one is the familial microcephaly i have mentioned that it can be a monogenic disorders monogenic disorders all of you know that it can be autosomal dominant autosomal recessive or a x linked uh, disorders so among them we, most of the time we all know that autosomal recessive disorders are uh, more severe so here again familial autosomal recessive microcephaly is um, uh, one of the common one of the common type and uh, by the clinical feature itself we can identify them because they have a slanting forehead prominent nose because of the this, this is a uh, slanting so you have a prominent nose and ears and uh, they will have a severe mental retardation intra most of the time intractable seizures and the brain and the sub, uh, cortex will be small and uh, this is one of um, uh, a familial microcephaly where you can see the three siblings almost uh, similar manifestations actually you see that uh, slanting forehead the, and uh, see that uh, prominent uh, forehead um, you know, prominent uh, nose and prominent ears but uh, this is so characteristic so this is a autosomal recessive type of microcephaly isn't it and as we have mentioned they'll be having most of the time severe mental retardation and uh, microcephaly and uh, the the mri of uh, the the la, the elder one you can see that almost akin to the see that uh, facial uh, appearance but here again you see that uh, the small volume of the but there is not much uh, structural uh, changes in this situation so when such a condition is there with a severe microcephaly we call it as a microcephaly vera just like a polycythemia vera and uh, uh, there are certain uh, genes associated with that also i will come to that later and then comes the autosomal dominance unlike a recessive dominant is not that uh, severe but they also have a upslanting palpable fissures hypertelorism mild slanting forehead prominent ears may be there and as mentioned uh, many conditions can have short stature so and uh, their intellectual impairment may be mild and uh, early phase a neurosonogram and later the mri uh, may uh, may be normal or show abnormal development of brain small cerebellum cerebellar hemispheres or pachygyria so that means uh, certain other uh, syndromic conditions with the uh, microcephaly this again is a uh, uh, we can see here very typical facies isn't it Fa typical facies is there prominent forehead see upturned lip up, uh, see the upturned nostril uh, uh, the pro the antiverter uh, uh, helix and uh, uh, jaw abnormality so these are very typical of a miller dyker syndrome and uh, the mri showed uh, this very smooth brain so this again this isn't definitely because their the brain won't be growing they'll be having a progressive microcephaly even progressive microcephaly so this is a case of uh, listen cephaly listen cephaly and we can see that uh, the picture is almost like a figure of eight appearance okay and uh, so as i was men mentioning that uh, the uh, microcephaly vera can have seven mcph uh, uh, mutations gene abnormalities mcph1 to mcph1 just like uh, neurofibromin is the protein product or the gene product uh, here uh, uh, dystrophin is the gene product in the uh, duchenne muscular dystrophy in microcephaly vera the the abnormal uh, protein that may be uh, generating microcephaly vera may be microcephaly that is a mc mcph1 uh, to 7 i told you that mcph1 2 3 4 5 6 7 mutations have been described and uh, uh, many of them can be dominant uh, then uh, other uh, mutations are list one mutation uh, list one mutation and then uh, tuba one a because tubulin related this is uh, list lisengefaly related the mutation especially the common uh, form of lisengefaly and the uh, tuba a1 congenital microcephaly spastic hemiplegia and uh, excelling the microcephaly as i have mentioned it can be a double cortex or a dcx uh, related uh, uh, microcephaly so these are the congenital malformation related microcephalies okay so if uh, uh, this sort of a smooth brain can produce uh, microcephaly uh, uh, this is again one of um, our uh, uh, a familial microcephaly where uh, 
you can see that father is having a small head both the uh, children are also having small gentlemen I and uh, uh, the boys uh, mri scan showed a micro encephaly with poly microgaria i'll show you another one see that this child is having additional uh, smooth brain also so this is a uh, because the brain is so small and uh, so you can simplify you can call it as a micro cephaly with a sim micro lesion cephaly it is simplified uh, gyral facet actually in addition to that there are certain other uh, findings also because i'll bring it as a separate entity later that is this one so this is another uh, very very characteristic uh, entity to be remembered so here uh, we have understood that the cortical uh, uh, gyrational abnormalities or a migration abnormalities and now we can see that uh, abnormalities of the bone or the brain stem and the cerebellum also can present with microcephaly just like uh, the opposite thing that is the this is not danty walker uh, syndrome this is a different syndrome that is pondo cerebellar hypothesis i have seen many times the radiologists also give, giving a report of a, a danty walker syndrome for this actually this is not danty walker syndrome this is a pondo cerebellar hypoplasia because this children again will be having a progressive microcephalia then uh, they will be having a dystonia chorea etc will be manifestation and see that uh, very thin very thin bones very thin uh, uh, medulla and see almost uh, absent or hypoplastic uh, vermis because other part of the cerebellum was there in this so i just kept uh, this so this is pondo cerebellar hypoplasia so this is another uh, condition which can present with microcephaly then uh, this is another the, the, the second type of uh, uh, lesion cephaly is uh, cobblestone lesion cephaly many times this children may be having megalen cephaly because uh, but uh, they can um, uh, certain forms can present with microcephaly also they are the cobblestone lesion cephaly you can see that this is associated with the muscle eye brain muscle eye brain syndrome so the brain may be and then uh, abnormal somatic manifestations with the uh, s lag syndrome or other uh, syndromes where uh, especially genitalia abnormalities Uh, the kidney abnormalities they also this also can be there so look for uh, those associations then in that case one such a uh, condition is uh, proud syndrome you can see here not that uh, proud about it but uh, you can remember that the child is having a uh, genital abnormalities it's a shawl like uh, uh, scrotum you can see the hypospadiasis there uh, so that is abnormal genitalia and uh, the here the corpus callosum genesis and again see that microcephaly some uh, corpus callosum may have associated hydrocephaly and that situation may be different but most of the time it will be microcephaly see the microcephaly so and uh, there will be other associations like uh, see mental retardation limb contractures scoliosis tapered fingers with the uh, hyper convex nails these are the uh, some of the somatic manif and then other systemic manifestations also the renal dysplasia uh, as we have seen uh, cryptorchidism and hypospadias and also so this is uh, related with the arx gene ranging from this and lisx2 mental retardation that uh, because of these uh, associations this may be this is a case of proud syndrome you can remember that is and this child had a very characteristic eeg finding also because of uh, its uh, you can see there uh, the corpus callosum genesis corpus callosum is not there that means uh, right and left side will be uh, functioning in a uh, uh, independent manner so here you see this is the right side uh, eeg this is left side eeg right side eeg and see what has happened there are spike discharges but uh, coming from uh, one side and then from the other side like that and there is no secondary generalization happening because uh, corpus callosum is not functioning so this is this you can uh, remember as a checkerboard pattern see just like a check uh, board that is a checkerboard pattern of uh, eeg seen in a case of corpus callosum mesenesis and so those were the primary genetic syndromes uh, uh, of a mendelian inheritance autosomal dominant conditions we have learned autosomal recessive we have learned and uh, then migration abnormalities also we have learned and then comes the syndromes there again i have told you to remember 
the chromosomal anomalies like uh, Down syndrome and uh, Edward syndrome and remember uh, deletion syndrome that is a crudu chat uh, syndrome. Then uh, CRS we have mentioned congenital rubella syndrome, isn't it? So Cornelia de Lange syndrome. Rubinstein KB syndrome and Smith Lemliopet syndrome. If time permits, I'll uh, just give you an overview of these syndromes also. Right. Already I have uh, discussed how to approach the case, but uh, here a uh, child is brought with a microcephaly. Then uh, you have to definitely go for a family history, isn't it? You have understood that uh, to rule out a primary microcephaly. And then you go for a, uh, the prenatal, perinatal, and postnatal insults because to know. Uh, cause for a secondary hydrocephalus and uh, that includes uh, radiation and uh, uh, drug history then infections maternal diabetes pku difficult delivery because uh, birth asphyxia can lead to so low of gas then uh, significant fever in the neonatal period because hyperthermia because maternal hypothermia considered as a cause for this one also and then the newborn period because associated hypis cry, poor feeding seizures, and uh, jitteriness, all will be more. And I look for spasticity. Okay. So, examination already I have mentioned that uh, because a proper head circumference measurement and charting on a uh, chart that is very, very important. Don't forget it because a later uh, head size may come down. So, that is why a serial head circumference recording and then look for a dysmorphic features and measure the. Uh, length of the child to characterize whether it is a short stature. If it is short stature, is there uh, look whether uh, the head size is proportionate to that uh, short stature or a disproportionate to differentiate the syndromes that I have mentioned earlier. And then look for other uh, manifestations like uh, child's posture, uh, symmetry. Then inspection the uh, the skin for the uh, neurocutaneous stigmata uh, and uh, its uh, weight and height also to be. Then uh, we must go for a detailed neurology in, in, uh, evaluation, including fundus, because toxoplasma can have a, a chorioretinitis, even uh, uh, or a uh, salt and pepper appearance in a in a rubella, rubella syndrome. These findings uh, may be there. And later, rather, uh, you have to assess the developmental delay or even a regression. Many cases that may happen. Okay, so. Uh, Craniosynostosis is another condition which is always confused with microcephaly. But uh, one thing you must remember, I won't be discussing craniosynostosis in this discussion because if I discuss that, I'll be giving an uh, 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 idea that the craniosynostosis will be having microcephaly. But uh, in 99% of uh, uh, craniosynostosis, the head size will be normal because uh, in uh, various type of craniosynostosis, one uh, suture will be open. So, Either it will uh, allow the growth of the skull so that you may get a scaphocephaly, or uh, if uh, the coronal uh, suture is uh, patent, sorry, the, the absent, then you get a, uh, uh, if the uh, the the, the suture is uh, closed, then the uh, growth will occur on sites. So you get a brachycephaly like that. So growth will be there. The only thing is that uh, the, the fused uh, suture will be showing ridging. And uh, but later, when there is all the uh, switches are uh, again, you get a tarricophile like thing. But later, they can develop an uh, increase in the angle pressure because of the crowding. Okay, so uh, that means uh, the microcephaly and cray, you can see the shape of the skull will be comparatively normal in microcephaly, I mean, other than the receding uh, this thing, but uh, it will be abnormal because plagiocephalic uh, in craniosynososis. Or a prominent bony ridge, as I have mentioned, to be seen in acraniosynososis. But certain acquired microcephalies I have seen this, I'll be discussing that uh, later. The next ray can the minimum suture line will be there, but uh, no uh, no suture line will be seen in acraniosynososis. But the uh, open uh, sutures will be seen, depending upon which uh, suture is uh, being prematurely closed. CT scan can be used to identify the Sutures because it will be uh, open in a microcephaly, it will be closed in patients, uh, just like that. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, suture line will be rigid and uh, increased negative pressure may be there in a crisis of creation, but uh, microcephaly, so it will be normal because uh, already the brain is atrophic. So uh, that is it. So the only one point you have to remember is microcephaly, you can't uh, uh, increase head size by doing a surgery, but craniosynosis, you can improve the. 
head size and cosmetic improvement can be done by a surgery that is it so uh, investigations also depending upon the uh, etiology in thing and had to understand the finish so these are the two things we have to remember in investigations either you have to do ct scan if you are expecting a calcification to be seen so here you see there is a diffuse calcification and uh, there is hydrocephalus also this is one situation where microcephaly and hydrocephalus will occur together microcephaly and hydrocephalus will occur together in toxoplasmosis congenital toxoplasmosis syndrome so and there is a triad or tetrad of uh, toxoplasmosis a triad of toxoplasmosis is microcephaly hydrocephalus and diffuse calcification but and uh, along with that if you are telling a tetrad then chorioretinoitis also can be included okay and uh, in cmb you get uh, just the uh, periventricular calcification see the periventricular and usually the, these uh, infections also can associated the brain malformations so here you see that peri peri sylvian cortical dysplasia can be seen here and uh, remember that in calcification of the cmb you remember it is c that is central calcification central or periventricular and in a toxoplasma it is a diffuse calcification actually diffuse calcification okay and hydrocephalus is there okay. and uh, so the and uh, many times uh, i also find it very difficult to identify a syndrome this is uh, so you can uh, I, I have put it like that you can also google because almost always the parents will parents and patients will be googling and they will be coming with a google diagnosis so you can also google and uh, this child you see they came to the casualty uh, to the our uh, pediatric neurology op and i saw this patient and i examined and found certain uh, findings when uh, so these were the findings that i found there was, i found that microcephaly is there then uh, uh, ptosis, uh, proptosis, you can see that uh, proptosis is there. See that eyes, both eyes, uh, there is a proptosis is there. And uh, and uh, uh, strabismus. So I put uh, just three, microcephaly, proptosis, and uh, strabismus. Then uh, this was the first diagnosis I saw, that is boring opid syndrome, boring opid syndrome. Then uh, I read about it and then uh, re-examined the child and found this uh, posture and uh, this poster and this is it okay you can see that there is a abnormal uh, poster and this poster i didn't know that it was described as a boring opitz poster boring opitz poster okay so it is a characteristic positioning of the upper body known as boring opitz poster this poster consists of see slouching shoulders bent elbows and wrist so this sort of a twisting so before that I, I didn't so that is it you know you see that now you can see again okay i'll show you once again see that so that's it okay so with that uh, that means once you know the entity you can uh, uh, go back and find the findings also which is the treatment i won't be going you know that uh, that uh, specific treatment can be given depending upon the nutritional uh, 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 the condition and supplements may be helpful and uh, associations like uh, seizures hyperactivity other uh, problems and genetic counseling is most important thing and uh, for the postgraduates usually a prevention so always remember whenever we remember primary prevention and uh, so you can give a rubella vaccination then uh, see prevent because late pregnancies uh, can be avoided so that uh, syndromic uh, microcephalies can be avoided then early screening for torch and uh, uh, labor room care because uh, so that uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy can be prevented adequate health education consanguineous marriage uh, avoiding etc so depending upon the pattern of inheritance recurrence risk also can be mentioned and i just uh, included uh, two more uh, conditions because i think we can take uh, two three minutes more so it is a uh, uh, defective cleavage of the brain because hollow prosen cephalia for different degrees so this is uh, so you can see that uh, the the this variety uh, because uh, where uh, uh, you can see the fusion variety where you can see that uh, 
to the hollow frozen uh, kefali. Uh, and uh, and now just a few questions to our uh, uh, audiences. I don't know whether uh, they'll be answering or uh, they can just uh, put the uh, answers there. There is an abnormal rounding of occipital and frontal lobe. This again is uh, from the Nelson chart only. Uh, that say the chart which I have shown: a small cerebellum, narrow superior temporal gyrus, uh, propensity for Alzheimer's, and abnormalities of uh, cerebral cortex. Any anybody who is giving an answer in this case? I am uh, looking at the uh, to the chat box. You can put the answer. Anybody yes, is putting sir. the answer there? Yes, sir. Four. Yeah, many of them have. I think oh, five, six yes, people have answered as Down yes, syndrome. Down syndrome. Yes, Down yes. syndrome. And Down syndrome. These are the features of Down syndrome. Okay, so you can see there. I am not going to the details. But uh, again, all of you know that this is one of the conditions of microcephaly I have already mentioned. And now, uh, this is a child with microstomia, macrognathia, lost malformed ears, prominent occiput, rocker bottom foot, congenital heart disease, increased gyre, heterotopy of neurons. Any anybody gives giving the diagnosis here? They have already given, sir. Edward syndrome. Ah, <laughs> Lot of them have answered. Ah, okay, very good. Uh, Edward syndrome. So Edward yes. syndrome for those uh, beginners, those uh, PGs who are uh, beginners, you remember that this condition with the uh, hypertonia. All, all other uh, trisomies are associated with hypertonia. You see here the uh, scissoring like a uh, posturing. But again, see two things can happen there. There will be. I'll show you that uh, with the animations. Okay, so here I look at that. I'll show you that. Okay, there is a prominence of the occiput. Okay. Uh, and uh, upturned big toe. These two signs, uh, see prominence of the big, uh, occiput and upturned big toe. These are two signs uh, which will be uh, diagnostic. And one more uh, sign almost, and this is the, 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 uh, the uh, covering of the uh, third and fourth fingers by the uh, thumb and the little finger like this. So this posturing, this uh, sort of a hand grasping is also very typical. So this is uh, trisomy 18 or uh, Edward syndrome. So these are the features uh, for remembering. Again, remember that and remember this animation. And uh, that is the posture. Okay. And uh, in Patau syndrome, you just remember that uh, there are uh, midline defects. I have just uh, drawn that midline defects. So it starts from the scalp defect. Uh, you can see here, uh, I taken the Nelson chart here. So scalp defect can be there. Then uh, uh, there can be a, a hypotelorism, then a cleft lip, cleft palate, then micrognathia, chest deformities, congenital heart disease. So remember this uh, midline uh, uh, graph uh, picture. Okay, so there'll be a sternal defects, umbilical hernia, then uh, genital abnormalities like that. And uh, they can have a polydactyly or a syndactyly also. And always uh, think differently also, as I have mentioned. I told you that uh, CRS, you can remember certain uh, syndromes. Crudujat syndrome, all of you know. Cornelia Delange syndrome, where uh, again, uh, see that the limb abnormalities may be there. Growth relay, synophrys, you look at that uh, synophrys. And uh, this side, again, uh, one of our uh, patients with, uh, again, synophrisy, you can see that, uh, so microcephaly, so Cornelia Delange syndrome. And similarly, when there is a broad thumb and toes are there, you think of a Rubinstein Tabby syndrome, and they will be having big nose, again, epigantic folds, etc. And this is a very, and uh, they will be having you know, heart disease. Okay. And uh, uh, CRS, I told you, because congenital rubella syndrome, S is the, Smith Lemley Opit syndrome. Here again, uh, tosis, cephalocephaly is a, a prominent feature. And then uh, don't forget the metabolic disorders. I told you this was a case of a phenylketonuria with severe microcephaly, mental retardation, spasticity, etc. And it can be diagnosed uh, by a urine perichlorate test where you'll get a PKU, will give an emerald uh, green color. Histidinemia, you get a greenish color. 
green is a brown color and uh, navy blue color in a ms so just uh, two more uh, three slides acquired uh, microcephaly you have to remember because even though the secondary microcephaly many are acquired but at least remember uh, three conditions as acquired microcephaly see acquired microcephaly where you have to do a serial head uh, head circumference mon monitoring normally the head circumference must go like this okay but uh, suppose the head circumference is coming like that so it comes uh, initially but by six months it go, uh, start uh, arrested and then uh, goes down so this is an acquired microcephaly very much uh, characteristically uh, seen in this uh, case i think all of you can make a diagnosis with the hand washing movement with the uh, autistic features you can see the hand washing movement and mouthing movement that is red syndrome so red syndrome the triad is microcephaly stereotypic movement that is the hand washing movement or a hand uh, mouthing movement and autistic features and they usually will be having a loss of purposeful hand movements so the other conditions which can have uh, this sort of uh, acquired microcephaly is uh, remember hiv and hie hiv encephalopathy and hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy you can see see because uh, the, the um, hypoxia had led to a uh, the, the the caving in of the skull and so you can uh, pull the pull down the see the you can pull uh, the the scalp hair and see scalp uh, yeah, scalp can be and you just pull your uh, try to pull your uh, scalp you can't so this is an acquired microcephaly secondary to the new one bead there are some hypoxia but so later it developed a multi cystic encephalomalacia and a uh, microcephaly so these children will be having a cp or mr cp or of first normal retardation cerebral palsy and a microcephaly so to conclude i will go back to the nelson chart where uh, you have learned about the primary microcephaly and secondary microcephaly so primary is familial they can be autosomal dominant autosomal recessive x linked recessive and uh, structural abnormalities which are mainly lissen cephaly micro lissen cephaly and uh, pondo cerebellar hypoplasia and uh, then uh, uh, coming to syndromic chromosomal anomalies and then our uh, crs okay remember uh, crudo chat syndrome cornelia de lange syndrome Robinson Davy syndrome and Smith Leblevich syndrome. Secondary again a toxoplasmosis and fetal alcohol and fetal hydantoin and then this radiation meningitis etc. So that you can do. And I have told you how to approach it. So careful uh, whether it is a primary or a secondary. If it is primary, you measure the lung to see whether it is a uh, proportionate uh, microcephaly or a disproportionate microcephaly. and then uh, look for any antenatal infections or any other environmental factors that is contributing to the secondary microcephaly and uh, look for any dysmorphism so that uh, syndromic microcephaly can be identified short stature then uh, always mri will be helpful mri will give you the diagnosis but uh, investigation like tor screening hiv screening etc are very very important and uh, if mri is uh, not uh, giving a diagnosis you can go for uh, this uh, micro array micro array as well as uh, uh, dna clinical exome testing also may have to be done whenever you are planning for a uh, genetic counseling i think i'll uh, stop here uh, thanks a lot uh, for all of you and also to our uh, host that is uh, aoc and web academy dr rekha uh, uh, dr lokesh and dr uh, um, ramesh all all uh, thank you once again thank you sir thank you so much that was uh, very comprehensive and very informative uh, for not only for the students for us as well uh, now i uh, i'll hand over to dr ranjit for uh, uh, carrying out with the quiz so I request all the attendees to stay back uh, you are i'm sure the way you were answering the questions by dr kunju i'm sure most of you will be able to answer the quiz questions as well ranjit good evening everybody we will see the answers for the
then we become the winners sir so uh, the question is uh, the relationship between length and head circumference can be expressed by this formula so sir was mentioning about this die in formula uh, it is head circumference is equal to length divided by 2 plus 9.5 plus or minus 2.5 that is the answer amount of alcohol that can be safely consumed during pregnancy it is actually supposed to be like almost nil answer is zero zika virus causes microcephaly what is the mechanism uh, this is a little bit difficult question just to en uh, enthuse the participants uh, read uh, this thing we have asked this question it hijacks a pathway which regulates growth of new neurons so what is the most likely gene affected in this child age is 8 months mri brain is normal so it's a primary microcephaly so it is unlikely to be mecp2 because it's a such a 8 month old baby other two so answer is aspm which is one of the common cause of primary microcephaly gene in india which of the following is least likely to be associated with microcephaly it's a little bit tricky question because all the four can be associated but uh, based on the, uh, the likelihood so we will give either hiv or toxoplasma for both like if they have answered both will be considered as correct not true about head size in autism uh, microcephaly seen 15% that's true girls with microcephaly may harbor mscp mutation that's true complex autism phenotype is less likely to be associated with microcephaly that's true so presence of microcephaly in autism is a predictor of bad outcome so option is answer is option b So, which of the following is not true with respect to microcephaly in this condition? So, this is a, nothing but the hand wringing movement, uh, which Sir has uh, clearly shown in his talk. So, this red syndrome. So, which is not true? Microcephaly is due to excessive apoptosis. That's true. Some atypical variants may not have microcephaly. That's true. Caused in majority by a de novo mutation. So, microcephaly in rats is not congenital. It is acquired. So, answer is option B. Yeah, just to clarify, some people. Uh, when they say acquired, they may think of acquired causes. Although it is a genetic condition, but it is postnatal microcephaly. Yes, sir. Yes. So make a gestural diagnosis like it is microcephaly with sign of phrase with a typical appearance. The answer is Carnelia de Lange syndrome. Sir was emphasizing multiple times in his talk about this uh, syndrome. So the definition of microcephaly with relation to the mean of age and sex. So clearly, it is below three standard deviation for the age and sex. Not true regarding the method of head circumference monitoring. The non-bull trap is true. Secure roughly around the widest possible. Take it and select the longest. That's true. Should be done on day three of life to eliminate the effect of scalpedema. By recommendation, it should be done on day one itself. So answer is. option 4 yeah so this is small head with a classic lesions of any like parent so, so we have given different options to confuse the uh, uh, participants the answer is micro lesions of any which of the following will prevent observer bias while measuring head circumference using elastic tape using tailor tape using frankfurt as no relation using inches for the measurement and converting to centimeter centimeter can prevent observer bias which of the following is the most commonly associated comorbidity with microcephaly of all these intellectual delay is the commonest comorbidity yeah this is a picture which has been given to identify the plagiocephaly type so as sir has clearly sp spoken in her in his talk it is a coronal which is uh, fused so it is a bicoronal which is causing scaphocephaly Yeah. So that's the end of the answers. So the results, uh, the first place goes to Vishaka Varshini from Ames. Second place goes to Dr. Geeta Anjali from Bhutan. Third place goes to Dr. Smriti from UCMS Medical College. Congrats to the winners. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, there was quite active participation uh, during the talk as well as uh, the following quiz also uh, this has been very uh, exciting uh, part of this uh, third season of aoc and web academy uh, thank you one, uh, once again for the wonderful talk and uh, uh, any concluding remarks sir you want to make 
no uh, again uh, to students always because i am an ardent uh, fan of uh, nelson so uh, whatever the we have discussed here even the questions uh, the 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 uh, quiz uh, he has mentioned is uh, given in nelson so you use that as your uh, uh, master thing and uh, then uh, add additional points if required from uh, other monograms so for microcephaly also the best book is uh, nelson itself so that uh, chart to you all uh, by heart and will be useful for you always okay thank you sir thank you very much thank you everybody uh, good night thank you sir okay good night